Hello and welcome back to another lesson on learning Wagtail. In this video, we are going to enable an orderable and a stream field into our API. So in the previous videos, what we did was we got the API up and running. We added some custom fields and now we want to add our stream fields and maybe something a little more advanced like an orderable. So before anything, what I have to do is go into my website get into my environment. You may not be using pip if you might be using something else. Either way, you're going to need to get into your environment. And then we just type manage.py run server. All right, our server is running. And if you open up your browser and go on over to localhost port 8000 slash API slash v2 slash pages, you will see we have our API up and running. Now, if you don't have an API up and running, we are using Wagtail's headless CMS API settings. You can find a video on that in the uh, in the rest of the YouTube playlist. I covered it. I covered that subject uh, about installing it and getting it up and running um, over the last two or three videos, I believe. So what we're looking at here is we have an ID of three, an ID of four, we've got an ID of five. So these are all different pages. They give us the different page type, detail URL, HTML URL, slug, first published ad, bunch of other good things. The one we want to work with is our home page. So let's open up the detail page. And all we do here is we click on the detail URL and that's going to bring us to the detail page. All it really did was added a three in the URL. So we can see on this page that we have a bunch of extra information. We've already enabled banner title, banner subtitle and banner image and also banner CTA. But if we open up our code, where is home? And then let's go into models.py. Oh, that is far too large. Okay, we're in models.py and we have an orderable in here and then we have our home page. And if I scroll on down, we have our exposed API fields. Now let's say we wanted to add an orderable to this. So we have an orderable right here. And because it's an orderable, it's basically an inline model. This is the way you can think of it. We're going to grab the related name and we are going to come back down to our home page and add the related name in here. Now this is not going to work the way you think it's going to work. I'm going to save this and I'm going to refresh this page. So it gives us our carousel images. This is nice, but it doesn't give us any extra data. And the reason for that is because we actually have to add one more API field. We have to add one on the orderable itself. And this works just like panels. Anywhere you see a panel is a place where you can add an API field. So I'm gonna scroll that down, type in API underscore fields, it's equal to a list. And the only thing I want to expose here is this carousel image. And this is going to take an API field with carousel image. So this one is going to expose the actual image itself, but we use a related name in the home page. So if we save this and refresh our page here, we will now see that we have type detail URL, download URL, and a title. And then because this is not the greatest example in the world, if we had another field in here and for this orderable, maybe we had a different title because it's a carousel or maybe a CTA in here, all we would have to do is add another line in here and this would be different field name. Whatever the other field name is that's that's somewhere around this area, you would just add it to this list. And all of a sudden it works. It just works. It's actually it's quite magical. I'm not going to lie. It's totally magical. If you come from an ecosystem like Node, you have to do a lot more work to get this up and running. But with Wagtail and Django, it is super super easy. Okay, so that is adding an orderable to your API. Now, let's go ahead and Scroll down, where are you here? This is hard to read, so I'm going to put this on a different line. <laughs> Please hold. So I have a stream field here, and inside of it I have a list of tuples. Well, there's only a single tuple in there right now, but theoretically I could have more, like that. I have a stream field and I want to expose all of my stream fields. So this might not be, again, the greatest example because there's only one in here. But all we have to do is add 
API field, and then our name. We didn't cover this before. And we're going to cover that now. So literally all I did was added one extra line here and said, oh, use that stream field, please. Head on over back to our browser and refresh. And it looks like nothing happened, but if we scroll down, we will see our content. Our type matches this name in here. It gives us value, so it has a title, text, a button page, so we know that that's the ID of the page that it's going to, a button URL, and some button text. Button URL is blank because it can be blank. The button page is selected, and it has a custom stream field ID. Now, all of these stream fields are basically a giant list, or if you're in the JavaScript world, that is an array of objects, or a list of dictionaries. Now, this may have been a little bit too fast to pick up on, so let's run through one more example. Let's grab, let's grab a page. In fact, let's, uh, let's go and explore. Let's figure out what page we want to expose here. So we have pages, home, blog, uh, let's do this one, this one. It's gotta be one of these. Hello world. Oh, we got some authors. That's a good one. Okay. So this is what we're going to do is we are going to expose some fields for our blog post page. And the blog post that we want to edit is blog post number six. So let's go through here. We see idea six, blog post page, blog post one, and let's click that detail URL. Also, just a note, if you are using these links where it says HTML URL and detail URL, and you notice that it doesn't have the port that you're looking for, you can just go into your Wagtail settings, go into sites, yes, leave page, go into localhost and change that port. By default, it's set to 80, just set it to 8,000 or whatever port you're running it on. And that will automatically fix it up in here. Okay, so we are looking at a blog detail page. We have a bunch of metadata, we've got uh, parent information, and we have a title. Let's go take a look at what this is showing in our models. So in our models, I'm just gonna scroll to the top here. So we have a blog authors orderable. We have a blog author. We have da, 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 a blog category which is registered as a snippet and a blog listing page. Doo, 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 and if we go down, a blog detail page. And we've got a couple other detail pages that are inheriting from blog detail page. But this is the one that we want to work with right now. So I'm going to scroll down, find our content panels. We've got a bunch of content panels in here, but we don't have any API fields. API fields is equal to a list. But you're going to notice that if you add your API fields here, it's not going to do anything. And if we head on over to our home models.py, we are actually importing this line here. So line six. And that is literally the only thing that we are doing. We're just importing API field. So I'm just going to take a mental note that I'm on line 220. Come back up here and let's throw that right there. Wagtail, API, import, API field. And let's go back down to line 220. So I have these API fields and what do I want to enable in here? Well, I probably want our content, uh, probably categories, banner image, banner title. And we're going to see that if we look at the content panels, we actually have inline panels here. We've got, actually we just have the one inline panel, but we have blog authors in here. So we're going to want to add that as well. So I'm probably not going to cover every single field, but let's definitely take a look at the orderables and the stream field. So we have blog authors in here. Let's go ahead and add a API field. We'll call it blog authors. And that is a related name. So remember, we're going to have to go back to our blog authors and enable more API fields. And then let's also add our stream fields, API field, and put content in there. In your application, that might be called body, that might be called stream fields. I simply have it called content. Now, when I refresh this page, we can see that we have blog authors. It's not returning as much data as I would like it to return. So we'll talk about that in a moment. And we have content in here. We have a full rich text stream field. The value is in straight HTML and we have a custom ID. 
So great, our progressive web application or single page application is now able to use that content, but it can't use that blog author because unless we look up every single blog author by its ID, which actually we can't because if we went to pages slash one, you're going to see it doesn't even exist. This is the blog author ID from the orderable. So now we head on over to our code again and we need to look for this blog authors. So we come up, where are we? Blog authors, you gotta be in here somewhere. Blog listing page, blog category. Okay, so we got blog author and then at the top we have our orderable. And okay, so we have an author which is going to go to blog.author. We can see that class here, blog author. So we have access to the name, the website and the image. And that all comes through one field called author. So let's scroll that up so you can see which class we're working on. Let's add an API field. API fields equal to a list. And that list is simply going to be API field author. And if I refresh our page, we can see that our blog authors is now going to show us that there is an author field in here. And that's a foreign key. You can tell because it has an ID. And it also has meta information. The blog author is the class type. And you can see that there are two authors in here. So at this point in time, you're probably thinking, well, there's still no useful information in here. And actually, you are absolutely correct. There is no useful information in here at all. In fact, all it's doing is grabbing an orderable. We're grabbing a field and it's saying that it's a foreign key to another area, another class somewhere down the line called blog.blogauthor. So let's go ahead and take a look at our blog author model. Now you might be expecting to simply just add your API fields to your blog, to your blog author model. However, this is simply a Django model. It has no idea that there are API fields. Now there are some additional niceties that Wagtail gives us like panels. And because there are panels here, like I've been saying before, you can assume that there are API fields in here. And I'm going to show you that this does not actually work the way that we're expecting it to work. So we have a name, a blog author name, put that in there and let's refresh our page. We can see that nothing happens. Now this is not behavior that you're expecting because we've just been sort of willy nilly throwing API fields all over the place, but it doesn't work in every single instance. And again, the reason for that is because this is a Django model. And you can tell that it's Django model because where it says models dot, if we come up here, from Django.db import models. So what we're going to do instead is on our blog authors orderable, we're going to add a custom property and expose that instead. So we can add a property in here, property. And let's give this, I'm going to move this down a little bit. Let's give this a name of uh, we don't want author because that's already exposed, but we want to get the author name, the author website, and the author image. So let's do one example here where we're getting the author name, author name, and it's going to take self, and all it's going to do is return self.author.name. Now, if you're wondering where I got that from, self is, well, it's because it's object-oriented programming, so it's referring to this entire class. Author is the field name, and because it's a foreign key, Django allows us to use dot notation in order to grab the name. And to expose this, all we have to do is type in author name as an API field. Now let's go back here, refresh, and we have an author name. Now you notice it's not nested underneath author, and that's because author is its own field. You can think of this as sort of being hidden, author is its own field and author name is its own field as we can see here and here. So let's say we also wanted to get the website and we also wanted to get the image. So I'm going to call this one website. I'm going to call this one image and we are going to copy this property two more times. So author website, author image, author website and author image. Save that and let's see what this is going to give us. Now we got rid of author, but we have author name. We also have author website and author image. 
And we can actually see that uh, we ran into an issue here where the object type of image is not JSON serializable. We're actually not going to cover that in this lesson. We're going to cover that in, I believe it's the next lesson I'm going to be making. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually undo that one. So I apologize for the inconvenience there, but that one deserves its own video. So I just got rid of that and refresh the page and da -da -da -da, scroll on down. We've got an author name and we have an author website. Beauty. So one takeaway from this is when you are working with API fields on any class and you notice it's not working, chances are it's inheriting just from a Django model. And you're probably using some sort of foreign key system where in this example, we have our author, which is using the blog app and a class called blog author, which just happens to be right below. Now that's a foreign key that we can grab these fields on, but because it's a Django model, we cannot just throw API fields on there. Yes, it works with panels and it holds mostly true. Wherever you see panels, you can most, most of the time you can put API fields. But when it comes from something raw like Django, we actually need to do a little extra. And that little extra is actually super, super simple. All we did was we added a function or a method in our class. We said, actually read this as a property and it just returned the name and the website and then we exposed those. And that is it. And lastly, we ran into an error where the image was not JSONifiable. And we're actually going to take a look at that in the next lesson. And that's getting its own video because it deserves its own video. Now, don't forget at any point in time, you can reference this code on GitHub. It is all available there from the very first episode to, well, the very last episode. All of this code is available in GitHub in separate commits. My name is Caleb Tallin. I'm the voice behind the videos. I'm an author on learnwagtail.com. If you're interested in more videos like this, you can always find these videos available on learnwagtail.com. Or you can find them available on YouTube. I'll link up the playlist in the top right corner. And hey, don't forget, if you learned something new in this video, if you found something was helpful, you can always share this video. You can subscribe, which is always really appreciated. Or if you just want to pop your head in and say hi, you can leave a comment down below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video about custom serializers.